So one thing that we did there last time was we went a little bit too high, I think. Uh, so I think what we need to do is we need to rotate ourselves laterally sooner, basically. But everything else looked good, so let's go. So I'm going to turn right away and we're going to go in this direction. Let's just hope that John's a good enough pilot that he can uh, hold that. Solid sort of rockets are almost out. And we're jettisoning them. There we go. Now notice that we are slowing down again. Now we're speeding up. Um, that's not... Well, that is because we've lost the thrust, but because we didn't have the additional mass slowing us down, that we didn't waste as much time, so to speak, doing that. So, we're going in nicely the right direction. But remember, we only have to get to 16,400. But ideally, we want to get above the Kerbin's atmosphere. But the same. You don't really want to have to go sideways in the atmosphere because that's obviously a lot of drag. You want to get as high as possible before you uh, burn. Also, uh, due to conservation of angular momentum, a force which is applied at the edge of the orbit is going to have more of an effect than in the middle of the orbit. We'll talk about that more later. So, how are we looking? Oh, no! I didn't mean to do that! Jordan, I'm so sorry! Uh, can we... Oh, oh, this is bad. Um... <laughs> um, Jordan, uh, I, I, uh, uh, oh my god, ah, uh, okay, this is, that, oh, wow, okay, oh, well, you know what, <laughs> I think we're gonna be alright, you know, you're just gonna take this huge orbit out, I, what I did though was I, I, Pulled the stage, the, the static coupler, before uh, I was ready, before, before Jordan was ready, and um, we were just being pushed along by the rocket, and I, I couldn't move us because we we got a sodding great rocket moving us. All right, well, it actually looks like that's uh, pretty bang on. Maybe I was worrying over nothing. Right, that's got to be over the top of it, surely. Oh, come on! That's really nearby! I mean, yeah, we're like that far up of it, but you know. Oh, that's, that's, that's some bull right there. That's, we are definitely over the top of that. Oh, and I've even lost my science! Oh, what is this? We've been to space, though. You're the, Jordan, you're the first first one of us to properly get look how happy he is he's um jordan mcgonagall you're the first person to go to space from the youtube space program i hope you're very proud look how round kerbin is it's a shame we didn't fulfill our science objective but before we can go here the moon we've got to do a few, a few more things i think I think we're gonna. I think I want us to get into a stable orbit around Kerbin. I want, I want us to have a proper orbit rather than just one of these trajectories that takes us into space and out again. And I'd like us to do a spacewalk. I think. So to do that, we're gonna need some more money. We're gonna need some more science. I love this game. I, I love how pretty it is. It's it's. Um, it's why a lot of people in the comments were saying how they'd always wanted to be astronauts and everything, and I can completely empathise with that. With a view like this, why wouldn't you want to be? Oh no! My parachute failed! No! Jordan! I'm sorry! Oh no. He's the seas now. Oh god. Oh man, we have our first fatality and I was so upbeat about it. I'm so sorry, Jordan.
It all went so badly. And then it went really well, and then it went really badly. Oh, no. <laughs> this contract has been so much trouble. Honestly. Why couldn't we have taken this one instead? How much... Oh. Well, I, I did say I couldn't promise anybody safety. I didn't think it would be quite that bad. Look, you can even see the debris from here. Oh, that means I can collect it. There you go, a little bit of money. Okay, so it's not all doom and gloom, I guess. Jordan McGonagall, missing in action. Oh, dear. So before we can upgrade the launch pad, I think the thing we need to do is we need to upgrade the launch pad so we can actually get into orbit. But in order to do that, we need lots of money. So we need to do a contract, which is going to give us lots of oh. money. This one was meant to do that. But it was a bit difficult for us. This one, however, this is the other one, which is much closer. So let's do that. It's much easier. Now, if anything, we demonstrated that this vehicle was a little bit too powerful, but I quite like it. So, I think we're going to run with it. We're also going to have... Oh, never forget. McGonagall. 2014. Right, let's put Ross Murray in. Ross, you wanted your shit to be cool. Well, actually, no, no. You didn't give me a ship name, but I really like your username. So, given that it's got a countdown in it, I thought it was appropriate. You are going to be flying the cool... Five, four, three, two, one. Let's get some money. We've got to be with a really cash-focused space agency. To be fair, I think that's most space agencies. Right, so we are flying. Oh, it's so close. Look at that. Right, but we're now going... We're now going this way. Okay. Okay, whoa. That's a Explosive! No! No, I don't want to repeat it last time. No, no, no. Behave. No. Right. Stay there. Come on. Right. There we go. Now, if anything... Uh, which direction do we need to burn in? We want to go slightly n northward. So what we can do is actually literally just point the ship north. Oh, oh, that's cool. So it actually now tells us. Yes. Success. Right. Let's just jettison. <laughs> one mission. That's all it took. This one can go screw itself. Brilliant. Okay, so that's just netted us a lot of money. That's good. Right, let's just make sure that you get down safe to the ground, Ross. Don't worry. Don't look so worried. I really don't want to repeat it last time. Come on. I'm not going to lose another man in space. Alright. What we can actually do is we can look at the altimeter in the uh, the crew capture. There is a reason why you have this view. So we're just over a kilometer out, so let's deploy our parachute. There's the rest of the spacecraft. That's going to explode. What's your view like? Oh look, you can see the moon! You can see the moon! Oh, that's cool. And that's actually a point, we can use this display again. Almost there. Oh, nearly there. Come on. There we go! Alright, oh, so. This is good. Ross Murray got some XP, that's fantastic. Right, we still need more money. What's gonna give us lots and lots of money? Now this one gives us quite a lot of money. Um, so we have to, I mean a suborbital trajectory, so that's what we've been doing so far anyway. We have to be pretty high up and all we have to do is fire an engine as high up as we've been so far. 
I think we could do that. Do you? Yeah, go on. Let's do it. So, in order to do this then, what we're going to need to do is uh, put another stage on. Because we literally need a tiny amount of fuel. Oh, we've got a new engine. So this is the one we're supposed to be testing, I guess. Uh, the LV909. Yeah, this one. Okay. So this is like a small... Uh, a smaller engine that you would use on, for example, a, a Lunar Descent module or something. But we have to wait to fire it until we are over something like 70,000 metres. So, we have to be patient. Um, Ross didn't get much time in the sun, did he? Right. Tell you what, Ross, you're an engineer. Useful to have around. Let's take you with us again. There are different engines for different purposes, right? So, what we're using at the bottom here... Oh, look at that. Look at that for a segue. Um, is a, a launch engine. You know, it's a very, very powerful, heavy engine. With a large amount of thrust. Burns fuel very quickly. But this smaller engine that we're going to be testing is something that we'd use uh, in Lunar Descent, for example. It doesn't have as much... There, there are lots of different terms that you can use to describe rocket engines. So you have specific impulse, you have um, newtons of thrust, um, you have power to weight ratio... Uh, oh! There we go. Um, the, you know, there's a whole bunch of terminology. Oh, no, no, we're not losing another man. Um, because you wouldn't want to guzzle up all of your fuel whilst landing on the moon because there's literally no need. So why would you bother taking a, a big heavy engine that does that? And um, this is something which is represented in the game. When we do our, our moon landing, which we are going to do, that's, that's one of the big objectives I want to have. Um, I will be using probably this engine, actually. So it's probably just as well we're testing it. Now, how high are we? Oh, I think actually we're high enough. Uh, uh, what? Oh, no, um, uh, separate. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, that could have gone a lot better. Thanks for watching my playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. This is really the YouTube space program, I suppose. This is where I am putting YouTubers and their spaceships into space. If you would like to be part of the Kerbal Space Program, then please comment below and I will add you to the roster. And equally, if you have any ship names, or if you have a ship name that you yourself would like to pilot, please comment down below and I will try and get you in the game. Lastly, if you have any suggestions for topics I should talk about over the top of gameplay when I remember to, then please also leave those down below. In particular, I'm going to be looking at rocket science and rocket history, but if you think there's anything else that would be relevant, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching.